All right, we're filming. What is your name and where are you from? Katrina Miller. I'm from Delta Junction, Alaska. I'm Vivian. I'm also from Delta Junction, Alaska. Wow, a lot. So this is like a heat wave to you. It's nice, actually. Yeah. I mean, it's a heat wave for me, yeah, even though I've been in New York for the last little while. So yeah. tell us a little bit about Alaska. Well, it's cold there. Ice, uh, but no, I don't, I don't know. There's not a lot of highways, so you have to... Listen, um, there's a lot that you can hear about Alaska. We are from off the road system, so 50% of the year we had an ice bridge, and 50% of the year we boated home. Yeah, uh, that's it. That's the interesting part about Alaska. Yeah, you have to take boats and planes everywhere because there are no roads. That's the most interesting thing about Alaska. What yeah. about like snowmobiles? I mean, that's a big waste of but... gas, and you can't get that far. So, I guess people like, did it people... for fun or lied to themselves. Yeah, it's for fun. If you needed a snowmobile for like going a long distance, you have to use a dog sled, <laughs> which we did not do. Actual dogs are better. Yeah. What do I need to see if I'm visiting Alaska? Denali National Park, um, the mountain, Denali, and I honestly, Chena Hot Springs. Yeah, Chena Hot Springs. It's like a bit touristy, but um, a really good place to be. They have an ice hotel, a hotel made out of ice. Very cool. I've never heard of that. That's very no. interesting. What do you miss most about Alaska? Yeah, our extended family lives there. Not the, not the uh, winter long darkness or the summer long I brightness. I actually do. I do love the like long light. Yeah. The summertime, you mean? Yeah, like. Going out at two a.m. and seeing, oh, that's yeah, the sun like, right you there. You can go for a hike at any time of the night. Amazing. Nice, nice. Okay, now let me just say, just if you if you if you don't know how to answer a question, just say skip. What are three wishes that you have? Uh, I would like to graduate uh, summa cum laude. I would like to uh, always have good friends around me. And I would like to be able to financially support my family and my parents in their old age. Very nice. Yeah, she said it. Uh, you would like to be rich? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know. Same wishes? Yeah. All right, that'll work. Peer pressure. What can you tell me about it? I have personally never been affected by it. Um, I think it's just you can decide not to care right and exactly. after you like once you make that choice or like there are people who are born with that mindset like built in right and i feel like i was really lucky to be one of them right. you maybe weren't but i was able and to choose you, my friend group yeah once you decide that it doesn't matter uh you have so much more power over your life and that is really positive mm -hmm. try to make that decision as early as you're able to and stop peer pressure only matters if you're around people who are making decisions that you wouldn't make yourself. So if you personally, as an individual, want to make certain choices and you surround yourself by, with people who are making similar choices, it's not going to be an issue, in my opinion. Did I already ask you this question? What were your first impressions when you came to New York? Hmm. Well, we visited a lot as kids. But I just moved here like four months ago. And in COVID times, I was shocked at how um, chill it is just being able to like move around compared to when I visited. And like, it's not crowded so much anymore, but there's still a lot going on. There's a lot of places to go, lots of things to see. And it's honestly a lot easier to be here as a person alone in COVID. Um, really, it's really nice.
there's so many beautiful things to see just like walking down the street and to be able to like take the time to just like observe is an incredible blessing. Any things that you believed earlier and then you came here you'd be like oh that wasn't the situation or that wasn't the case? About like, New York, the city. yeah, because a lot of people come here with certain expectations. I mean, even though they've come, they've been here as visitors, mm -hmm. but sometimes there are certain things that you have to sort yeah, of, you know, experience to live here in order yeah. to know. So this is probably somewhat unique to me, but like, I expected my money not to go as far as it actually does. So and it didn't dry up as quickly as you expected. Yeah, exactly. And like, I happen to be very lucky. I get to live with family, but like, I can treat myself. I can go out. I can do a lot of different things. I can buy the things that I want, things I need, uh -huh. and I'm still building savings. And that's something that I never expected from when I visited. And I also never expected it like from hearing other people's accounts of like living in New York at all. Now, one of the things that my guests have told me is they want to see videos about how to save money in New York. What kind of tips you got for the folks out there? Live rent free. Get a sugar daddy out there. <laughs> um, yeah, my tip would be uh, find our strategy has been nanny for somebody you can live with. During COVID, people are looking for live-in care for their kids more than ever. If you can establish trust with somebody who will like to live with them, yeah, do it. But that is and easier said than done. There are catches, of course. Like, I can't host parties at home, but I wouldn't have any way to COVID. Um, oh, so that's what you're doing? You're nannying for people? Yeah. Yeah. How'd you find how'd you find that if you don't mind me asking? Family. Yeah. So it was through people also, you already knew. Yeah. But like most people hire through agencies, so look up like au pairing or live in yeah. nanny uh, agencies and that's gonna be the best way. Excellent advice. What are some of the biggest challenges of being a nanny? Uh you have to is, is it something that you can just jump into? I'll say the biggest challenge right now is that the parents are always home. And the kids relate kids relate differently when their parents are around. Even if they can't see their parents, they know that they're in a the house. And they act differently and almost always worse. That's the biggest challenge right now. Because in normal times, you could just like do activities with them, whatever. And like not worry about it too much. But now you're not just worrying about the kids' safety, you're also worrying about their parents' opinions. What do you think of it? I would say the hardest thing about being a nanny, and this doesn't have anything to do with COVID, is you are the primary caregiver to a child. You're raising them, but you are the one deciding. You aren't making decisions about their life or what they do. Like and I look at the kid that I can for and I'm like I spend all day with her and I think I know what she needs and sometimes that doesn't align with what her parents think she needs and I'm not like I can't make that decision I can't I can't decide what she's yeah I don't get to make the decisions which is hard because I'm so emotionally invested and I spend so much time with this kid, but I'm not the boss. Yeah, that's true. That's how I right How important is marriage to you? How important is what? Marriage. Not, not important. Not important at all. Yeah, fuck don't that. care. Ancestry, how important is that to you? A lot of people spend a lot of money, a lot of time researching where they're from, who they're, what their roots yeah, are. I'm white, but I'm not zero percent yep. That's care. good enough for you. Yep. What's the weirdest thing someone has done or said to you in this park, other than me coming up to you like this? I spend very little time here. I don't really have a good... No, you wait! Oh my god, I have a good story from yesterday! Please. Oh my god, okay, wait, can I take my mask down? Go ahead. Okay. Okay, so yesterday, I, like two days ago, I matched with someone on Hinge, and we started talking about chess. I've been watching the Queen.
Queen's Gambit, we all have, obviously. Um, and so we decided that we were going to meet up southwest corner of the chessboards, and he was going to teach me how to play chess. I've never played before, but like watching that show convinced me I should. Anyway, so we sit down. I nanny for a four and a six year old, and they've been taking chess lessons. I sit down. And you came here with the kids? No, 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 no. I came here by myself. Hinged it. I was off. I was by myself. I sit down at this chessboard, and at the chessboard right next to us is the person who I've spoken to multiple times from the kids' chess lessons. She's their chess teacher. Yeah, yeah. So she's been doing chess lessons for these kids over Zoom, and she's amazing. She's a great teacher. Like, they're learning so much from her, and I sit down there and realize that she's the chess teacher. Anyway, so we started talking. The person that she was playing against is someone who did the same format of debate that I did in college. Um, so we actually knew a lot of the same people. The person who was my mentor in high school debate is someone that he knew from debating like in Eastern Europe. It was amazing. Um, yeah, so that was yesterday. <laughs> it was just like a crazy coincidence that like I sat down next to this person who I've like become friends with but never met in person. Um, and she was sort of there for a chess lesson as well. She was playing against a guy who's like amazing. Uh, yeah, it was dope. Let's go back one step here. What is Hinge? <laughs> well, <laughs> Hinge is the dating app that I would recommend anyone in the city get on. Okay, second point. Like, regardless of what, if you're looking for free chess lessons, get on Hinge. If you're looking for a long term right recommendations, a long term relationship, somebody to marry, somebody to hook up with. Yeah. A sugar daddy? Could happen. A plus. Hinges so it's it's worked well for you. Huh? It's worked well for you. You've gotten positive. I would say Hinge is the only dating app that's worth getting on in twenty twenty. I'm on several. <laughs> How when you're on those kinds of uh, platforms what Everybody's asking this question. How do I how do I get people to recognize me? How do I get people to to accept me on those websites? Or how do I get people to, to, to link with me? How do you call it? Match? Yeah. Yeah, how do I get people to match with me? What do you look for I on a profile? Be hot. That's not thing. No, I think Hinge is actually somewhat unique for that. There are so many opportunities. And the app really gives you lots of like suggestions lots of ideas of like interesting things that you can say um also for me like i'm not necessarily that attractive and i just accept that like probably 95 percent of the people that i think are cute won't think that back about me and that's fine like you just have to accept like even if you only get five percent of matches you still might like meet someone cool every now and then and What's but most? What's the most important thing? What he writes or his the pictures that he posts? What are you oh, looking I'm, for? I'm also not straight. Um, but or or her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Sorry about that. No, it's what fine. They write, what they write? Definitely. What, what they, they write? write. So yeah, pictures are second. The, but pictures also are the second personality on him. that shows through in the picture. Like if all oh. of your pictures are you with your like whatever like crab bros or like or totally. even just being like I mean you can't see my face but like you know some like cringy stuff yeah. that like is not, doesn't show a lot of like uniqueness or doesn't look like somebody who I connect with, then that can be where the pictures are like a deal breaker. Right. But in general, if you have interesting things to say, yeah. Um, if you're not the 18th person that you're scrolling past who's asking for like music recommendations, everybody fucking says that. Also, yeah. everybody says there's this one prompt on Hinge that's like, what are you most competitive about? And guys, infamously answer everything that's an automatic uh, like nobody unmatched. wants to no I, girls don't want to date a guy who's competitive about everything that's not pick one thing to be competitive about yeah. <laughs> now tell me about one profile that stands out to you that you can remember you? if any we might need to run Okay. No, it's fine. I've Gotta never go seen a profile on Hinge that stood out to me. Except for, you know what? The thing that stands out to me is if you went to an Ivy League school or uh, speak French. See, for me, it's if you went to an I Ivy League school and you still have, like, a hilarious, like, joke in your profile. See, for me, like, an Ivy League is not an automatic matchmaker. No. 